animals in Old English. Animals in Old English. Now, the thing is, before we begin, Old English is like German or other Germanic languages that have three genders. So, we have se, meaning the masculine, seu, which is the, but feminine, that is neuter, and the is uh, plural. So, and all these words mean the word the. So, with that in mind, let's begin. Now, the thing is with Old English, is that you can't just say the animal, but what kind of animal are we talking about here? Well, we could start off with talking about a wild animal, and that is that deor. That deor, the deor, the deor. Now, the thing is with Old English, yes, um, like other languages, sometimes the singular is also the plural. I know that may seem a little complicated, but hey, uh, it really depends on the context and the sentence and what's going on. Anyway, so, wild animal, that deor, the deor. And this is the word that evolved into what we know now as deer. Uh, a German cognate to this would be a tier. Like, uh, I think that I spell it T-I-E-R. Yeah, a tier. Um, this would be the Old English cognate to that word. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Let's, uh, let's move on. So then then another kind of specific animal we can talk about is um, a tame animal. And that's that feo. That feo. That feo. The feo. Now, this word, yes, uh, has a lot of meanings to it. But in the case of this video, it simply means tame animal. Yes, in, in other contexts, it could mean cattle or currency or whatever. But in this case, tame animal. Or, if you will, uh, domestic animal. Anyway, let's move on. S, seu, leo. The leon. And here we have your lion. Now, for this one. Um, S, tiger, the tigras. Normally, in Old English, uh, part of me may think that it could be pronounced as S, tier. Because thing is, we have a G between an I and E. And... And I and E are uh, both um, uh, um, open vowels. Sorry, no, no, wait, no, 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 pardon me. Uh, they're both uh, front vowels. Yeah, sorry, pardon me, front vowels, yeah, because and normally a G between those, uh, those kinds of, uh, and what are front vowels? Front vowels are I, E, um, ash, Y. Yeah, I, E. Uh, ash and Y, these are front vowels because they're set in the front of the mouth. And part of me may think this might be tier, but uh, given that this is a Latin based word, I would think it'd be tiger. Yeah, so I mean, the G, the, the pronunciation of the G really depends on the on the etymology of the word. Anyway, so, so tiger, the tigras. Same way we have a tiger. Rawr. And then we have our friendly bear here. So, sabera, sabera, the beran, the beran. Then we have uh, his girlfriend, if you will. Um, Seobiran, Seobiran, the beer, the beer, beer, nun, the beer, nun, beer, nun. Yeah, so that's a female uh, word for uh, bear. Then we have so wolf, so wolf, the wolvas, the wolvas, wolf. And this is the female form, Seowulven. Se wolven, the wolvenna, the wolvenna. Now we have a fox, so fox, the foxas. Okay, um, thing is, this is gonna dive into a little into dialectal, um, old English. Um, in, in the case of the West Saxon dialect, uh, this can be pronounced as vox because, uh, we find out in later history of English. Then in the sac what was then the Saxon areas that uh, the word fox was spelt with a with a with a v, and so that would suggest like in uh, 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 Low German um, that uh, or if you will uh, modern Saxon uh, that you know it could be uh, well depending where you are it could be a, a v or a f, but in any case of Old English and uh, relation to West Saxon, this can be pronounced as Savox, so, so or if you want a more modern pronunciation, or Savox. So, so, so if you want that V, that's more of a West Saxon pronunciation. So, Savox, so the Foxos, or West Saxon, 
so vox the uh, voxas and then we get into the female form and this is important because we have seo fixen the fixenna but this word evolved into what we know now as vixen yeah all right so it's this can be pronounced as seo uh, vixen or if you want seo fixen uh, or or the fixenna or vixenna um, if you like i mean it really depends what you're, what you're really going for if you want like a like a Saxony kind of like approach, you pronounce this as a V. Anyway, moving on. Then we have Sa'apa, uh, the Apan. Okay, this is uh, quite revealing uh, because this goes to show that this is an older language. Um, this was before a time when we had the word monkey, and this is before a time that people differentiated monkeys and apes. I mean, today, yeah, we know full well that. Uh, monkeys and apes are, are, are two different, I mean, they, they're related, but they're not the same species. They're not the same entity, a lack of a better term. I don't know my zoology uh, uh, terminology that well. But anyway, so, but for the sake of Old English, they're both the same word, unfortunately. I mean, I've tried to look up the word for monkey in Old English. It just, it just it doesn't exist. I mean, I mean, unless you guys know it down below, uh, let me know. Anyway, let's move on. So, so sa'apa, the apan. Sa'apa, the apan. Then we have uh, our huge friend here, uh, se'elpan. Se'elpan, the elpandas. Se'elpan, the elpandas. The, se'elpan, the elpandas. The elephant, the elephants. That horse, that horse. The horse, the horse. Yeah, it makes more sense now, doesn't it, when it's when it's Old English. It's actually phonetic. What you see is what you read. Well, not not all the case in Old English, but in this case, yes. That's a handsome-looking horse. Anyway. Then we have, uh, yes, we didn't have the word donkey, because, uh, well, that's a much, la I would think, a later word. But, so for, but back then, it was called an ass. Now, forgive my French, but yes. So here we go. So we have se'asa, se'ezol. So uh, asa, so ezola. The as asan, the ezolan. This is like a uh, very uh, similar to the cognate of German uh, ezel, which is the same thing. It's a, a donkey, an, an ass. So, so asa, so ezol, so asa, so uh, so uh, ezola, the asan asan, the ezolan. And there, I mean, I mean, just, just to give you a, an, an idea of how the language works, I mean, I, I've chosen these spellings, even though there are a lot more out there, because Old English is a much more complex language than most people think. Anyway, let's move on. So herta herot, so herot, the herotas. Yeah, this is um, specifically a, a heart. It's a kind of stag. So it's specifically uh, uh, a, a, a heart, you know, yeah, because I didn't want to use the word deer because it's too general, like to be specific. So, so herot, so herot, so herot, the herotas. And now you know what that uh, hall really means. The one that, you know, Beowulf fights Grendel in, anyway. So hind, so hind, the hinda, the hinda. This is the female form of of, um, of a heart. And when I say heart, I mean H-A-R-T in modern English. Not heart as in H-E-A-R-T. -E that's that's different. And spelled differently. Anyway, moving on. Sahara. Sahara. The Haran. The Haran. And this is a hair. Seo Da. Seo Da. The Don. The Don. Okay, this might confuse you, because um, thing is, um, there is no, uh, how can I say this? This is, the, the word da evolved in what we know now as doe, as in like, when we, th well, in English, when we think of doe, we think of like a female deer, like from Bambi or something like that, but, um, but the word doe can also mean like a female, like, rabbit or hare, and uh, so I'm going, and that's the only thing I could find in relation to a female hare, yeah. 
And yeah, there is no word for, and this is the closest word we have to rabbit because rabbit is a much later word. I think it comes from Middle English anyway, but moving on. So hund, so hund, the hundas, the hundas. And this is what evolved into what we know now as hound. And how do you call a female hound? Well, so pitcher, so pitcher, so pitcher, the pitchan, the pitchan. Don't worry, you won't get in trouble in this channel for saying this word because, hey, it's the origin. Let's move on. Sakat, Sakat, the katan, the katan. Okay, what is that little asterisk doing there? Okay, uh, for those of you who don't have a background in linguistics, um, this uh, is a hypothetical uh, reconstruction. Uh, this is, if you will, uh, an educated guess of what likely it would have been if it were attested. And that's why I put that there, because it's my guess on the plural form of, of, of uh, male uh, cat. Anyway, so let's move on. So cutter. So cutter. The cotton. The cotton. You see, it's attested here, but not attested in the, in the masculine. Hmm. So, I don't know. This is my linguistic guess of, w of what it would be. I don't know. Anyway, nice looking cat, eh? Meow. Then we have this little man here. Sail moose. Sail moose. Sail moose. The moose. The moose. This is a mouse. Yeah, the thing is with some words in Old English, they're either feminine or masculine or neuter. And, uh, yeah. Um, moving on. So oxa. So oxa. The oxan. The oxan. This is very similar to the word we have now. Ox. Yeah, so oxa. The oxan. Ox. Seo ku. Seo ku. And this makes sense why it's feminine, because cows are, well, feminine beings, are they not? The ku. The ku. The ku. That's chalf. That chalf. The, um, pardon me, the chavru, the chavru. And this is exactly what you think it means. A calf. That sheap, that sheap, the sheap, the sheap. That lamb, that lamb, the lambru, the lambru. Sabuka, sabuka, the bukan. The book on. So got. So got. The gate. The gate. This one, I had a little thinking about this one, the, the, the plural for this. Part of me thought it would be the yet. Because in I think in old Frisian it would, or old Saxon it would have been like that. But I'm not too sure if it was the same case for old English. Ah, well, for sake of simplicity... So got the gate. Okay, let's move on. Oh, look at that handsome fellow. That sween, that sween, that sween, the sween, the sween. Oh, time for an exercise. Yawak exercise. All right, so I would like to know. Okay, so what does this say? Hulches deor otha feo likat de. Of which animal do you like? Okay, to literally translate the Old English, it's of which wild animal or tame animal pleases to you. So, so the translating the modern English would be like, of which animal do you like? So I, I want to know what kind of animals do you like? So, in order to uh, type down below, uh, to answer this, uh, you could say, melikath, and then you would say, the article, uh, which in this case will be the, so it'll be su, it either be su, seo, or that. So, and in this case for singular, so it's melikat, for example. Uh, melikat, sakat. I like the cat. Okay? And let's say, well, you're a real animal lover, and you, and you want to say how much, how many more animals you like, instead of just one. So you would say, melikat, uh, 
then you'd say, well, I, uh, it really depends. Um, you could say, Melitia, Sehund, and Seku, and Seoku, and and you, or you can say, Melitia, Sehund, so this, say of that, da 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 da, and and that's because it's because it's more than one. That's the idea behind it. Or you could say another way to word this would be like Melitia, um the cotton. Uh, I like the cats, in other in other words, and I hope this makes sense so far with, with these examples and whatnot. So yeah, so let me know down below uh, which animal you like in Old English, and please not in Middle English or Early Modern English. That is not allowed here, only in Old English. So tell me down below which animal you like in Old English. Okay. And uh, that's so, oh God, that is uncool. I should have edited this before I started recording. Anyway, um, thank you for watching uh, videos every Saturday and surprises in the week. And if you want to help this channel out, please become a patron on my Patreon page down below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.